Hello, welcome to episode three of Crochet at the Lodge. Um, I am Holly Marie St. Pierre, and this is my podcast or vlogcast. I don't know which one it is. I'm supposed to be calling it um, about crochet um, and also some mental health tips too, um, since I'm a mental health therapist. Um, so I hope that, um, this video finds you all well and safe. Um, you might have read about, uh, some of the federal involvement, um, in the Portland area, Portland, Oregon, which is about, actually it's 40 minutes south of me, so we're not really, um, we're not close to that, what's going on there. Um, but um, I'm just hoping that you all are safe um, while you continue to um, exercise your rights in having a voice um, in this government. Um, so you might have noticed since the last podcast that um, my hair is a lot shorter. Um, I just decided I couldn't stand it anymore. It had gotten so long due to the lockdown and not going anywhere. And so uh, some of the, uh, the uh, salons are open right now. Um, we'll see how long that stays in effect. But um, I went to one where I knew they had really, really, really strict protocols um there was barely anybody besides me and um my hairstylist Kristen um she there was another hairstylist in there with a client but they were clear across uh the room and of course you know masks are required hand washing was required and um she even took my temperature um and I was really thankful for all those safeties um so if any of you are watching and you're in the portland metro area i just highly recommend uh, my hairstylist kristen spain um and she's at heyday salon um in portland near the lloyd center so um i'll put a little link in the show notes if any of you are in the area and you're interested she's wonderful um, I've been going to her for years and years. So, um, so anyway, um, just got it all chopped off because I don't want to have to go back too often. I'll probably let it grow some again before I go back. Um, anyway, um, it's extremely, well, not extremely, but it's very, very hot here. It was in the 90s yesterday supposed to be in the 90s again today. Um, I hope where you're at, you're staying cool. Um, we didn't really have much of a summer before 4th of July. Um, it was rainy and overcast here. Um, I'm in Southwest Washington, and so we do tend to have a lot of overcast uh, rainy weather, but it was, um, it was kind of frustrating how far into the summer it was lasting this year. Um, well, now we definitely got summer and um, kind of roasting here in our house. We don't have any air conditioning. Um, I live in an old, um, it used to be a Masonic Lodge. Um, and my husband converted it into a home. Um, and it's almost 100 years old. So, um, you know, we've been making slowly, you know, improvements to it throughout the years, but you know, with old homes, there's always stuff that has to be taken care of. So kind of a love hate relationship really. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, I'm going to get into talking about crochet. Um, just have some small things <clears throat> that I finished. Um, this time, um, I was working on a couple of hats for Hat Not Hate, 
Um, if you don't know about that, um, it is um, being put on by Lion Brand Yarn. Um, and it is a campaign to raise awareness um, about bullying. Um, and so they had asked for, um, I gosh, I don't remember the number of hats they were trying to get from knitters and crocheters, but um, they were asking for, the, for knitters and crocheters to make blue hats, um, child size, um, Actually, they have the dimensions on their website. Um, <clears throat> and those will be distributed in the early fall um, to uh, elementary schools. I'm not sure if they're going to go to junior high schools, but to different schools that are participating in the awareness campaign. And their deadline has been extended. Um, I just saw on their website yesterday that they're extending the deadline to September 1st. So um, if you uh, wanted to, you could probably, you know, depending on how fast you crochet or knit, um, get it two or three hats stitched up. Um, I had just gotten a couple made. Um, I think I had shared one of them in one of my last podcasts and then um, I made another one. Um, now this one, <clears throat> I'm not going to be sending in, um, I actually made two of these because <laughs> this is the first one I made and it's way too big for a child. It fits my head and I have a fat head. So <laughs> this is adult size, um, it's pixie hat, um, it's a granny square, um, style. Um, so it was really fun and easy to do if only I had tested the gauge before I did it all. But I didn't do that. You know how sometimes you get impatient and you just want to get started. Um, so anyway, um, it's really cute regardless. Um, but I made a second one. I made it with a smaller hook and it was child size. So I sent that one in already because um, I wanted to make the August 1st deadline, but now it's been extended, which is great. So more people have a chance to participate. Um, so this was, um, it's called Pixie Hat. Um, I got it, I think I showed this in my last podcast. Um, I got it out of this book, A Granny Square Christmas um, by Annie's Crochet. Um, all the designs in here are by Lisa Gentry. Um, she's on Ravelry if you're on there. Um, I don't know what other social media accounts she might be on, but this is just a really fantastic book. Um, you can you can also get it. I got it from Annie's. Um, it was on sale, but you can also get it on Amazon. Um, and so this is this is the hat. Um, so anyway, it went really quick. It was fun to make. Um, she also has one in here for a baby too, which is really sweet. Um, so super cute. Uh, anyway, so, and it's just, um, this was just yarn I had in my stash. It's worsted wool. I didn't have the ball bands for them anymore so I'm sorry I, I don't do not know what brands or what colors these are but um anyway again um Lion Brand is asking that all the hats be blue mostly blue I think it's I think they have the requirement is something like 60% blue or something because um blue is the color of awareness for this campaign so um so anyway, um, lots and lots of fun hat projects out there. You can see the other hat I made on my Instagram account. Um, I just joined Instagram. Um, was kind of putting off doing it because um, I feel like, for me, it's 
kind of a lot to manage social media accounts. So I was like kind of putting it off and putting it off. But now that I'm on there, I love it because I love seeing all the beautiful pictures from, you know, uh, crochet and knit designers out there. And then pictures that people have from their gardens to, I mean, well, they have pictures from everything, but, um, I'm interested in gardening, um, and crochet and so, um, just been loving that, really loving it. Uh, and on Instagram, um, my account on there is Holly underscore Marie 0407. And there's a link to that, um, on my YouTube page if you're interested. Um, so, um, so that was, I was working on a couple hat not hate hats. Um, and then, um, also out of this book, which I just love it so much. I just like keep picking it up and, and looking through it because it has such cheerful, fun designs on it. So important for right now. Um, I had made, I think I showed you on my last podcast, um, this little, she has this little, um, you know, banner or... I don't, I don't know what you would, what you might want to call that, but, um, I had made, um, s some snowflakes and a couple trees on it. And then, um, I also tried making the little stockings and I think these are so cute. I just love them. Um, so yeah, I made, I made a couple, um, you know, with three colors. And then, um, I also made one with, uh, just in red, just to see how that would look. Um, so, I don't know. I might make one in green. I don't know. We'll see. But, um, it'll be fun having this hung up. I think it would look pretty, you know, hung up with some, some lights, um, some Christmas lights. And, and again, these are just, this is just like nothing special worsted wool from my stash. I was just trying to use up some stash. So, um, so anyway, can't wait to see those up. They'll be really cute. Um, another thing that I finished, um, was this really pretty lacy headband. This is perfect for summer. Um, and this is um, Emma Escott's design from Lulu Loves Crochet. Um, she has a YouTube channel. Um, she's on Instagram. I think she's on Facebook too. But um, it's, you know, it's so pretty. Um, but what I really, really love about it that she did, which I think is just brilliant. So you crochet in a stretchy hairband into this and um you know for anybody that's made a hairband a headband um you know that um they stretch out you know after you use them a few times um i mean you can i guess maybe you know hand wash them and maybe they'll kind of shrink back. I don't know. I'm not sure. I haven't tried that. But I mean, you know, who wants to do the work and then wear it, you know, two or three times and then have it all stretched out and it's not any good anymore. So I think this was just, this was just really brilliant idea by her. And again, um, it's Emma Escott, Lulu Loves Crochet. Um, she's on Ravelry too. Um, she has one, um, on her site that's white and you can see mine is pink and, um, I made it with, um, Yarnspirations, um, Bernat, Softy, Baby, Cotton, um, and the color I used is Petal. Um, it's a, a three weight, um, and it's 60% cotton. 40% acrylic to give it some stretch. So anyway, um, I've already worn it and, um, I just love it. Oh, my light shut off. 
Well, I think it's light enough. The light's going to be okay in here. Um, I think it gets too hot and then it shuts off. Um, so I'm going to just plug on. Um, so other than that, um, I have a little blanket, kind of a receiving blanket I made, but it's still blocking. Um, it's it's uh, still wet, so um, I don't have that to show you. Um, I have a couple works in progress. They're not really things I can show. Um, I have a little part of a head of an amigurumi kitten. <laughs> that I'm making. Um, it's a sweet lying down kitty. Um, I'm working on that in white and then um, um, I have another hat not hate I'm working on. It's really not very far along at all. Um, and then um, so uh, I have this one project, I don't know if it'll ever be completely to my satisfaction, but I had never, I had never made a yarn bowl before. And I wanted to make a smallish yarn bowl for like little tiny balls of yarn that I have left over from projects that they're, they're really too small to kind of do anything with, but I didn't want to, you know, throw them away. And I thought they just look cute all you know piled up in a little yarn ball well and I made this too when I was kind of getting back into crochet and I didn't remember about um you know proper yarn weight for specific projects and I did this free pattern for a yarn ball and I'm not going to say who it is because I don't want to be like calling people out necessarily. <laughs> um, but she didn't recommend the right weight. She recommended using a worsted weight. Well, a worsted weight yarn is not going to hold its shape very well for any significant size of a bowl and I found that out <laughs> um, and so I didn't want to give up on it you know I was like trying to see it through so I put it on top of another bowl and I sprayed all this starch on it um, hoping <laughs> Like that would do something and it did do a little bit it it firmed it up some I mean it's not completely it'll sit there you know it's not completely collapsing but it's you know it's kind of puny so then um, I thought well maybe I could order some jewelry wire and because the stitch in it is there's there's um there's enough spaces that I thought, well, maybe I could weave some jewelry wire <laughs> around through it. And I, I don't know anything about jewelry making or jewelry wire. Um, so I ordered some from Etsy, it came really fast, but I think the gauge I ordered is a little too big to work with because I've been trying to use it and it's just not, um, it's it's definitely workable but it's just not it's it's hard kind of getting it wove you know in and out i don't know maybe wired ribbon i don't know and i may not be able to find a solution um i just i did all that work on it you know and you know how that goes so, um, I'm finding out, uh, and have been finding out for a while, if you do a free pattern, you may go to a lot of work and it may not work out through no fault of your own. Um, because I'm guessing that sometimes if they're free, they haven't had anyone tested, maybe? I don't know. Um, I'm 
I actually have not tested patterns myself, so I can't speak to it intelligently. Um, but you know, it's, it's, it's discouraging, you know, it's discouraging to do all that work and then have it not turn out and you've followed all the instructions. So anyway, um, lesson learned. Um, I'm hoping I can find some kind of, um, solution. We'll see. If you have a solution or you've had a similar issue, please, please leave me a comment. Please let me know what you did. Um, so anyway, um, that's kind of it for works in progress. Um, hey, sorry about that. My camera just stopped and I have no idea what was going on. So I have to splice it together. So anyway, um, let me go on. I'll just show you the other things I got. Um, I also got this buttercream angel hair. Um, it's a chunky, a bulky, let's see, bulky, size five. Um, I got a couple uh, skeins of this. Um, it's acrylic. 51% acrylic, 27% poly, polyamide or polyamide, and 22% wool. Um, they're kind of small skeins though. They're only 110 yards. I wish I would have got more than two. Um, I can always order more, but you know then the dye lot is different. Um, I don't know. It might not make so much difference um, since this has got so many different colors in it. We'll see. Um, depends on what I want to do, but I think it'll be fun to do some fingerless mitts. Um, or even, I found this really cute pattern for some slippers, and it's it's really soft. So, I might do that. Um, then, I also got, these are just, um, you know, uh, I think, I think they're just standard uh, worsted weight. Um, it's Big Twist by, uh, who is this by? Hmm. Big Twist Soft. Made in Turkey. Distributed by Joanne. Hmm. Maybe the name is Big Twist. I don't know. <laughs> um, so these are really, you know, these are substantial. Um, they're 320 yards. Um, and I got, they looked a little different online. So now I'm not sure how these colors, I guess they'll be okay together. Um, so I got, this is avocado. Um, I got light gray. And then I got um, blush. I think that those might look pretty together for something. I just really wanted to try them. Um, so there's that. Um, I also got a couple of skeins of Bernat Pipsqueak, which is this, oh, this super soft, um, yarn that, let me see if I can pull it out so you can kind of see it's, it's really fun. Um, so it's, um, yeah, it's for Nat Pip Squeak. It's a hundred percent polyester and it's a five. It's a bulky. Um, and there's how much? Um, 101 yards so these are small too but but they're bulky so this will be great uh, something I'm sorry hold it upside down uh, great for something for autumn time and winter so it's just really I can't stop squishing on it and feeling it. it's really great um, 
And then, last but not least, my favorite. I got a couple of cupcakes from Lion Brand. Um, I've used this color before on uh, Too Too Much. Uh, I made a bl baby blanket out of it. It turned out so sweet and cute. So, I had to get some more. <laughs> I got three cakes of this. Um, there are three. They're acrylic. Um, and they're 590 yards. So there's a lot. Um, I also got um, this one. I got a couple skeins of these. I was thinking about maybe socks out of this because this is a three. Um, and this color is Forest Path. So I just thought of socks when I saw it. So love, love cupcakes so much. It's one of my favorite ones. It's probably my favorite one right now. Um, so that's all my acquisitions thanks to a sale at Joann's. <laughs> uh, it's really popular because a couple of things I had tried to order, after I ordered them, they sent me a note saying, oh, sorry, we were really sold out of this and we didn't know. We shouldn't have had it up. So, um, so anywho, um, so that's about everything that I had that I wanted to touch base with you on today. Um, if you have any helpful comments on anything I've shared, I would love to hear from you. I would love to connect. Like I said, I'm having a great time finding people on Instagram and seeing all their beautiful posts. Um, you know, if you like the channel, I hope that you will subscribe. Um, I, you have to hit the subscribe button and the bell button next to it in order to get your notification, um, that a new, um, podcast has been uploaded. So, um, so this is the part where I share just a little bit for mental health. Um, I like to do that every podcast since I'm a mental health therapist. Um, so I, what I wanted to talk about was the quality of your sleep. Um, and how are you sleeping? Do you feel like when you wake up, do you feel rested? Or do you feel like, you know, wow, it doesn't even feel like I slept very much. I still feel tired. Sleep is, can be a really underrated element in our overall health. Uh, it affects so many things for us. Um, and as a mental health therapist, where I see people being impacted the most due to crummy sleep, is of course in their mood, um, their perceptions about things, how they're thinking about things. Um, so getting a good night's sleep and the amount of sleep that you need is, is really, really important. Um, so one of the ways, um, you know, when I'm going through stressful times, I do tend to have some insomnia. Um, and one of the ways that I cope with that is by um, listening to meditations or bedtime stories um, <laughs> on Insight Timer. I think I might have shared this app on my last podcast, but I'll, I'll have another link to it. Um, it's a free app. doesn't cost anything. You have access to thousands of of free meditations on it. Um, it works just fine with your phone as well as your PC or your laptop or your tablet, what have you. Um, and uh, there aren't just meditations on there. There's all kinds of beautiful meditative music um, that's great to listen to, like if you're crocheting or you're knitting or you're doing some kind of craft, um, or you're working in the garden. Um, there are talks, there are free talks if you're, you're interested in a certain subject. Um, 
And if you would like to try some meditations or learn about mindfulness, you can do that on there too. Um, so like I said, um, one of the ways that it's really helpful for me is, you know, getting to sleep or if I'm waking up in the middle of the night and I'm really anxious about something or nervous, um, I turn it on. And the bedtime stories that are on there, there are bedtime stories for children. There are also bedtime stories for adults. And so, um, it's nice to listen to something else, visualize something else, and get your mind off of, you know, whatever it's churning around on. So uh, anyway, um, I highly recommend it. I have used it for years. Um, I've tried everything on there probably um, as far as like types of offerings that they have. Um, I don't know if I'd ever get through all of the stuff they have on there because like I said, there's thousands of things. But um, I always recommend it to all my clients. Um, so give it a try. Um, can't hurt. Uh, there's nothing on there that's upsetting that I've found. Um, so give it a try. Um, and I hope that, you know, with everything that we've got going on, that you will still be able to manage to get a good night's sleep. It will really help you cope better, um, with whatever is going on in your life. You will find that you'll be more resilient, um, and make better decisions too. So, um, anyway, that's all that I have for today. Um, again, I hope that you all are safe and well, um, and take good care. Bye-bye.